Hey y'all, if you missed our last video where we showed our road trip to Durham, North Carolina, we'll link it for you to watch either before or after this video. It's pretty hysterical. <laughs> but today it's all about our first full day in the Bull City, where we started our day with breakfast at the Arrowhead Inn. Then we drove about 15 minutes into downtown Durham to meet up with Vita, the PR manager for Discover Durham, and she gave us an amazing tour of downtown. Before we get into that tour, we want to give a huge thank you to Vita for the tour and Discover Durham for sponsoring this trip. Durham is a very progressive and creative city, so you'll see a lot of interesting buildings, a diverse population, and quite a bit of street art, which we loved. We went during the pandemic, so masks were required, and there were many murals on display from the Black Lives Matter protests. The downtown of Durham is absolutely gorgeous. It's a beautiful, artsy, industrial vibe. It's filled with young adults, many of whom attend Duke University. It's a huge hub for entrepreneurs, and Durham is actually known as the startup capital of the South. There's this really cool spot called American Underground, where entrepreneurs can come to help build up their businesses. 31% of the companies in American Underground are female-led, and 30% are led by a person of color. If you've heard of Durham, you may have heard it referred to as the Bull City, like we did earlier in this video. It's a bull. But why? It actually comes from Durham's tobacco roots. John Green, a tobacco peddler in the 1850s, owned J.R. Green Factory and branded his tobacco with the bull from the Coleman's Mustard label. And the company was later named Bull Durham. Vita took us to the top of a local parking structure to get a full view of the city. It also gave us the best view of the old Bull Building, which is the oldest standing building in all of downtown. It was built in 1874 by William Blackwell, shortly after John Green passed away. You remember, the founder of Bull Durham Tobacco. Blackwell had purchased interest in the company five years earlier and renamed it the W.T. Blackwell Company. The company actually had a whistle that sounded like a bull, and it could be heard for miles. As you can probably tell, Durham has a rich history in tobacco. The American Tobacco Company resided in Durham for several years and produced brands like Pall Mall and Lucky Strike. The company closed in 1987 and the buildings were vacant until 2004. During their times of vacancy, SWAT teams would use them for tactical training. Pretty cool, right? Now called the American Tobacco Campus, it's a place of beauty with man-made rivers and waterfalls. The community also can enjoy free concerts in the summer, yummy restaurants, the annual tree lighting, and more. This is also where you'll find the Burt's Bees factory. Are you close so you can see it? Yeah. <gasps> oh. Oh, and we can't forget about the infamous Durham Bulls. Durham really has a beautiful, hip, and artistic vibe. They even have these cute crosswalks called Snap, Crackle, and Pop. Vita even took us to this super cool joint called the Durham Food Hall. It hosts 10 of the area's most incredible chefs, and it was designed as an incubator of sorts. It's a place where chefs could experiment with local ingredients, collaborate with other culinary experts, and serve a small menu in a casual environment with affordable prices. It's 15,000 square feet of space, 10 miniature restaurants, three event spaces, and two bars. Such a cool concept and a great stop while you're in the area. After absolutely walking our legs off across Durham, it was time to grab lunch. Before we even arrived in Durham, Vita had hooked us up with meals in some of the hottest spots in town. On this first day, it was Dame's Chicken and Waffles. They have three locations, in Cary, Greensboro, and Durham, North Carolina. And they are a fan favorite. Everything about Dame's is an experience. Between finding an inspiration that fits your chicken and waffle needs, choosing a schmear and a drizzle, and waiting for the fresh deliciousness to arrive at your table. I was a boring person and opted for the hold the waffle. I know, I know. You come to a chicken and waffle place and don't even get a waffle. Sue me. But the fried chicken legs were pretty dang good. Joni B took one for the team and dove into what a classy hen. 
It's Dame's classic waffle, topped with a chicken cutlet and vanilla almond schmear. Joni B also added the sweet whiskey cream upon recommendation. Even though it was good, she said it leaned a little too far to the sweet side. After we finished eating, it was time to tackle the Museum of Life and Science. Normally, they have indoor exhibits and their outdoor adventure, but hashtag COVID, only their outdoor section was open. We are at the Museum of Life and Science right now. Walk, there's a tunnel. Walking through the outdoor exhibits, which is pretty cool. Yeah. So make sure you subscribe so you can see this amazing Life and Science Museum. Yes. In Durham, North Carolina. Woo -woo. The entire outdoor space is basically a giant loop that's about one and a half miles. We were on a light stroll just looking around and we spent about 45 minutes to an hour exploring. But you could easily spend all day here, especially if you have kids. There's somebody's mask up there on that rock. <laughs> He's not the only thing in there, though. There's goats in there. I know, but it's like a His name is Lightning. Hey, Lightning. Hi, Lightning. Hi. as much as a donkey. At least I'm not a cow. Hello, baby. You're very cute. Oh. Yes, you are. The dinosaur trail is what I was most looking forward to. They've created life-size replicas of dinosaurs on this trail, and it was super cool. All the key players, like Mr. T-Rex and Stegosaurus, they're all here. flying at me, but it's just a butterfly, and now the whole place knows that I'm a psycho. <laughs> oh, I just tripped. <laughs> the mist.
Oh my god, it's look. It's a Johnny bee in the wild. Oh my god. <laughs> Is that a snake over there? Hello? <laughs> Hello? Oh, it's a frog! After we had thoroughly worn ourselves out, it was time for dinner at Bull City Burgers. Only their outdoor seating was open because, you know, do I even need to say it? So you'd mask up, place your order, and chill out at your table, with or without a mask, as you waited for your food. We weren't sure what we were feeling, so we ordered three appetizers. The fried pickles, which were classic and yummy, some deep fried jalapenos stuffed with pimento cheese. These were shockingly delicious. But the star of the show was this ginormous bag of duck fat fries. Holy freaking potatoes, y'all. These were so, so good. And that's how we ended our first day in Durham. Our second day vlog will be up on Friday. As always, thanks for watching guys, and if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe. It doesn't cost you nothing to hit that button, y'all.